Halloween's right around the corner, and I thought I would share a couple of ghost stories with you guys as opposed to poop stories. Because tis the season to be spooky and that shitty. So I do have a couple of good ones. I want to start off with uh, the Camarillo State Hospital. When I was a kid and the family, we all moved to Southern California. We settled in Camarillo. And at that time, just on the outskirts of town between Point Magoo and Camarillo was the Camarillo State Hospital. It was the largest mental health facility west of the Mississippi. It was so big. It's massive. They had their own power station there. They had their own dairy, uh, which b later burned down, and all the cattle burned to death. Uh, there's a hay barn next to the to the dairy. When we were kids, we called it the scary dairy. Um, the hay barn is still there, the structure itself, but I remember as a teenager, we heard rumors of, uh, I think it made the papers, I'm not sure, but um, an inmate escaped, uh, made his way to the dairy, got inside the hay barn, and he hung himself. Um, yeah, so if you look at the, the album, uh, The Eagles, Hotel California, that song is based about that facility. And if you look at the, uh, the album cover, that building is the building that, that's now uh, Channel Islands University of California. It, it's now a university. So, and there used to be a cemetery out there on those grounds. You can't find it anymore. I believe that they built the new library for the university on top of the cemetery where bodies are allegedly buried. I can't prove any of this, but you could easily look that up. Um, there were so many people that went there for treatment and a lot of them were never heard of again. They just vanished without a trace. Family members would go there and be like, Hey, I'm looking for uh, my uncle Fred. Last we heard he was in here to learn how to quit smoking or something. And, and where's he at? And they would say, well, he was discharged a month ago. We don't know where he is. So I don't know if they made that stuff up. It just could have been part of the lore, the lore, lure, lore. I can't talk today. Uh, just like what may have gone on over there, uh, you heard a, a lot of stories of people being abused and neglected and mistreated there and stuff like that. I remember there's a road, I think it's Potrero Road, that goes from Camarillo through the state hospital up to the back of Thousand Oaks at Newberry Park. And I would take that road quite a bit because I had expired tags <laughs> and I was broke. So to avoid getting pulled over, I'd take that road. A lot of people did. For example, my friend Dave. He was he took Potrero Road. He you, he would go around the Camero State Hospital into Newberry Park. I remember he was telling me this story. I, ooh, I get chills thinking about it. He, uh, he was coming back from Thousand Oaks through the Camero State Hospital on Potrero Road. And it's a tiny... Two lane road, one lane going up the hill, one lane coming down, and it's barely a car wide each lane. He got a flat. He pulls over. He's up against the fucking the property of the the state hospital. Now he's uh, he's he's got the jack out. He's got the spare out. He took the hubcap off and he's put he put the lug nuts in the hubcap. Well, as he's doing all this work, um, on the side of the road is a little. Right there, there's a ditch, and then there's a, a big, giant fe uh, chain link fencing. Well, while the, 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 the patients of the state hospital are out there behind the fence, and they're just kind of wandering around in their gowns and stuff, but one of them saw Dave uh, working on his car trying to uh, put the spare tire on. Well, this guy comes over, and he puts his hands up against the fence, and he just he's watching Dave do all this shit. Well, it's kind of distracting Dave, and... Uh, Anyway, so he's got the lug nuts in the hubcap, and he had, he had the hubcap out in the road, like just far enough away, where a big rig was coming down the hill, and it barely clipped that hubcap. It flipped the lug nuts into the opposing ditch. Dave can't find those fucking lug nuts. He's got this, this guy staring at him. He's got the spare tire on, but he can't lug it up. And Dave says... That the guy said, he's got his fingers through the fence, and he says, you know what I would do? And Dave looked at him, and he said, uh, I don't know what you would do. <laughs> and the guy said, I would take a lug nut from
from the other remaining tires. And I would take those three, use those for your spare wheel, and that should be enough to get you home. Dave's like, fucking A. He starts doing that. He starts to pull lug nut from the other wheels. And as he's doing that, he says, man, you're pretty damn smart. And the guy says, I'm very smart. And I'm very fucking crazy. And that's why I'm on this side of the fence. Dave hurried up his business and got the fuck out of there. Uh, one thing that nobody really did was drive through there at night. Because you would hear stories of people saying that they were driving down that road, going around the place, through the through the fields of strawberry fields and stuff like that. And there would be just people out in the out in the pitch black night wearing the like the, the, the hospital gowns, just wandering around and shit. And they'd have to catch them like the next morning and stuff like that. People escaping from there was fairly not a regular common occurrence, but it did happen. And if you're driving through there at night, it'd scare the shit out of you. Especially with that ocean that that fog that would come in and you'd see him walking around. There was a gal that um, that I was trying to date. Uh, I forget her name. But she's like, hey, let's hang out. Let's do something, blah, blah, blah. Let's do something fun. And I'm kind of throwing out ideas out there. And nothing's really like, you know, no zingers. And I said, hey, why don't we go out to the scary dairy you know, that burned down. And why don't we walk around out there at night. Might see a ghost or something. She said, oh, that sounds cool. Uh, and uh, so I thought that'd be kind of cool and I told the guys I went to the, the, the dine and ditch at Denny's with Steve and Scott and Ted those guys I was hanging out with them at the time and I said yeah I'm going to meet up with so and so and we're going to uh, walk around out there at the scary dairy well you know what those fuckers tried to do they all convened amongst each other like oh let's get out there before Jay gets out there and we'll hide in the bushes and when they walk by We'll jump out and scare him and make Jay look like a like like a scaredy cat. Look, make him look like a fucking, you know, embarrass him in front of this girl he's trying to impress. That's what they fucking did, but not really. I didn't know this was going on, so we get out there and we're walking down this dirt this dirt path, and we got flashlights and anyway we're making our way. We park off the side of the road by the bridge and we're walking through there anyway. We get maybe a quarter mile up the trail and we heard this commotion and like people running and stuff like that coming towards us. So, what the fuck? Shine the flashlights up ahead. Sure as shit. It was, it was it, those guys <laughs> come running towards us. I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing here? And they're like, uh, we intended to hide in the bush and scare you and embarrass you, but we're getting the fuck out of here. I'm like, Why? Well, they got in their position, and they were waiting for us to fucking walk by. And this was like maybe like ten minutes before we even got there. Five minutes. It was pretty, it, it was pretty tight. And they were just crouching down in the grass. And they said that they saw an apparition floating through, you know, just past them, and like ten or fifteen feet in front of them, and then it just kind of vaporized and just diminished and went away. And it scared the shit out of them that they took off running. And I thought that maybe they were embellishing this story and just kind of like, I don't, it just sounded weird to me. But I looked at Steve and he, his eyes were big. He was as white as a sheet and the guy doesn't lie. He just doesn't lie. And I, I and I said, what'd you see out there? And he said, I don't know, but it scared the fuck out of me. And we're not going down there and neither should you. We're getting out of here. He's telling the truth. I don't know what he saw, but it, it scared the fuck out of all those guys. So, um, fast forward many, 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 many years later, I uh, was set up on a blind date. I was going to move to Australia. I had one foot out the door, and I set up on a blind date. Met this gal. Long story short, I married her. <laughs> but um, when we were dating, she was really big into that Ghost Hunter show. She... Has all of them on DVD. Still does. They're in storage. And I asked her if she's ever been ghost hunting. And she said, yeah, I went once in Fort Smith, Arkansas. And 
it was a lot of fun and this and that. And I said, well, I've never really done that. So I remember for her birthday, I got her some ghost hunting equipment. I, I got her this really expensive, fancy EM, EMF reader. Um, I don't know where it's at. It's boxed up somewhere. I went looking for it. Believe me, I did. I couldn't find it. Um, I got that. I got a digital voice recorder, a little camcorder. And we would go out there to the Channel Islands State University, which used to be the Camero State Hospital. And we'd go ghost hunting at night. But we were cool about it. We checked in with the with the campus police and let them know what we were up to and stuff. And they were they were really cool about it. And they're like, okay, uh, just you know, be respectful of the buildings. Don't try and enter anything. And we're like, oh no, we won't. And so we did that uh, a bunch of times with some friends and some other groups and stuff like that. So that got to be kind of a regular date night kind of a thing. Did we actually find anything? We got a pretty weird audio recording. Um, I can't find that fucking thing either. Uh, it's not the wind. It's definitely not the wind. It's not us. And we can't explain that. Did we get any like pictures of anything? No, nah, not really. But it's just fun to get out and walk around and do that kind of thing. And, uh, oh, I know. I'm fucking forgetting something about this whole Camero State Hospital thing. Anyways, uh... Yeah, so that's that. But then we started going to other places and stuff like that. And we put, like, ads out, you know, like, trying to get, like, ghost hunting groups together. So let's go hang out and do some spooky ghost hunting stuff. And we got contacted by a lady that lived in a senior center community called Leisure Village in Camarillo. And... She said that her house was haunted. She just bought it, and she can't she can't sleep in there. She told us that the house was bothering her so much that she would have to sleep in her car every night. And we're like, holy shit. So my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, we show up there with our stuff, and we go through the house. There wasn't like a weird vibe or anything but you could kind of sense like something's kind of off about the place um but we put our equipment our emf readers up near the outlets every single outlet in that house had a huge fucking high uh number and so if your emf numbers are high in the house it's because there's an electrical issue there and that stuff will fuck with your mind it'll make you think you're like seeing shit or it'll make you paranoid and stuff like that Long story short, her house wasn't haunted. The wiring was, was fucked up. And it was affecting her mentally. And we told her, you need to get an electrician out here and, and look at this shit and get it fixed and you'll be fine. Then we started going to the Queen Mary in Strong Beach, California. I got some videos I'm going to show you. Is the Queen Mary haunted? Fuck yeah, it is. It is. Did we see some shit? I definitely did. Uh, the Queen Mary we stayed on a bunch of times. It's an awesome place to go. I'd probably say a good 40% of the time we would stay there, something would happen. We'd experience something. Now, I highly encourage you to go to the Queen Mary, book a room on B deck. B as in boy. Here's what we did. We would get a room on B deck. That seems to be where like the most fucking action happens and <laughs> um, I'm getting ahead of myself so one night we stayed there on the Queen Mary hang on so my my roommate Ted he was flipping houses at the time doing construction he was uh, doing a remodel on a house came across this pack of letters here that he gave us uh, the house belonged to a World War II veteran and these are love letters that he wrote to his sweetheart. Um, this guy's son didn't want them. He said trash them. So Ted took them and he gave them to us. And we would take these letters and with us to the Queen Mary and lay them on the bed. Now, you're probably asking yourself why we would do that. Well, the Queen Mary had a big role in World War II. Let me just pull up some numbers here. Ba-da-da-ba-da-da. -da -da -da. Some facts about the Queen Mary. 
da, 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 da. during World War II, the Queen Mary earned the nickname the Grey Ghost in reference to its speed and battleship gray color. Um, they called her the Grey Ghost because they painted her gray to blend in with the Atlantic fog. The Queen Mary was a troop transport during that time and actually set a speed record crossing the Atlantic. The Queen Mary was fucking fast for its time. Adolf Hitler allegedly offered a sizable reward to any German U-boat commander who sank the Queen Mary. Uh, the Queen Mary, by the end of the war, had transported some 810,000 troops. So, uh, one of the reasons why this ship is haunted as fuck is because it was crossing the Atlantic with troops on board. Lots of them. There, were, there wasn't room for these soldiers. They were sleeping in hallways and stairwells and bathrooms. And they were crossing the Atlantic, and they were with uh, an armed escort of other ships. Da, 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 da. Let me see. One trip. Yeah, here it is. In 1943, it set a record for carrying the most passengers. 16,683 people. And the Queen Mary is just over 1,000 feet long. It's a big ship, but that's a lot of people. In October 1942, the ship was involved in a fatal accident near Ireland when it collided with the escort ship HMS Kurokawa. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. The Queen Mary, which is 20 times larger and at high speed. All right, so what happened was there's a German German U-boat uh, sighted in the area. So they all start, the ship starts doing the zigzag thing, which makes it harder for them to get hit by a tor torpedo. So they start zigzagging. Well, the, the Kurokawa zigged when it sh should have zagged. It cut in front of the Queen Mary, and the Queen Mary cut it in half at, at high speed. Cut that ship in half. And the sailors, uh, da, 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 near 340 crew members were killed. Um, they were banging on the hull of the Queen Mary as she was going by. The Queen Mary went to stop to rescue these sailors, but they were told to keep going. Because if they were to stop and rescue those sailors, they'd be a, a, a sitting duck to any German U-boat in the area. And they would get hit by a torpedo and then they would lose the 16,383 people on board. So they were told to keep going. Also in the Queen Mary, there was a man that was brutally dismembered and murdered in one of the cabins. And that place was, was so haunted and, and, and shit where they, they won't rent that room out. Okay, the, like the, the 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 decor and the furniture in that room stayed the same, and you can look that up online too. I think they say that the, um, the housekeepers only go in there once a week just to look at it and make sure everything's tidy and stuff. But they won't, and it's always like a two-person team to clean that room. It's not open to the public. It, it's um, there's all kinds of shit that happened on the Queen Mary. Um, so getting back to what we would do, we'd take these letters, leave them on the bed. Uh, and we would set our alarm for like 2 o'clock in the morning, 2.30. And we would uh, get up in our pajamas, grab our ghost hunting stuff, put on our shoes, and we would just roam around the entire ship and not see anybody. And we would just go out and just have fun and just check out stuff. We had some pretty crazy experiences. One night, um, we went out roaming around. And I think we we're in the aft end of the ship. I don't know what deck that we were on, but we had this overwhelming odor of cigarette smoke. But it's not like you go in, I could go into a casino in Reno right now and just start coughing and everything because of cigarette smoke. But this, the cigarette smoke that we experienced on the Queen Mary, it was like stuff that, that my grandpa used to smoke. It brought back memories of, like, old t the tobacco, if that makes any kind of sense. And we're looking around for, like, ashtrays or anything like that. And I, I told my wife, I said, well, maybe the bar's nearby or something. And people, you know, left during the bar closing and just hung out here and smoked. And she said, no, the bar's on the other end of the ship. There's nothing out here. And sure as shit, we couldn't find any ashtrays, any cigarette butts, nothing like that. And But the smoke... It, the 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 smell of it got so much worse that we had to leave. Um, she started dry heaving and her eyes started watering. Like she's really sensitive to that. So then we went on another deck on the opposite end of the ship, and we were completely overwhelmed by the the, the smell of like acrylic nail stuff. 
You, you ever go by a nail salon and it has that acrylic uh, smell to it and makes your eyes water? That's what we were experiencing. And I said, well, we got to be by the salon. And she said, no, the, the nail salon's not anywhere near here. And we're like, fuck, can't explain this shit. So we just kept roaming around the ship with our stuff. Didn't really get anything on camera or, or uh, audio from the recorder, but we we're over by the first class uh, pool, which was locked up. Apparently a little girl drowned in there and you could hear her voice in there. Uh, we never did take any of the ghost tours that they offered. We just went on our own ghost tours in the middle of the night. But apparently um, you could take the ghost tour um, on the Queen Mary and you could go into that swimming pool area and some other spot, spots that's locked up. But my stomach was upset and I had to shit and we're right by that uh, the swimming pool and right across from the pool are the public restrooms. And I told her, I said, I, I need to use the bathroom. I get into one of those stalls and I'm taking a shit. And it felt like, even though it's enclosed, it's tight, I felt like I was shitting from a hundred people watching me. I you ever get that feeling that people are like like someone's watching you? That was overwhelming to me, and I couldn't get out of there fast enough. And I was the only guy in that fucking bathroom. That freaked me out. We get back to bed, and we oh my god, that that the most comfortable beds. <laughs> That's another reason why you should stay there. We we um, go to sleep. And I heard the bathrooms. I'm I'm a pretty light sleeper. Now where I'm at on the bed, I'm near. I'm closest to the bathroom and the door. I hear the sink turn on, and I'm breathing heavy. And I just kind of open up one eye, and I'm watching. And I could through the darkness, I could see the the, the rooms were small. I could see the the water coming out of the faucet in the bathroom. I'm like that's fucking weird, and I'm not. I'm wide awake at this point, but I'm still breathing heavy as if I'm sleeping. You know, the, like borderline snoring because <laughs> I'm a fat ass. And then here's, and then I, I I saw the fucking. I could barely see it, but I could see the handle turn, and the water shot off. And I'm like, no shit. And at my overnight bag is right next to the bed on the floor. The bag starts to slide across the floor. It just starts like jittering a little bit, making a little rustling sounds. On and then I, then I, I said, "Hey, get out of here!" And that stopped it. <laughs> that stopped the whole thing. Um. So I'm gonna show you some video. Uh, yeah. So this is really old. It's, yeah. So <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna show you some video here. Um. I would set up the video camera in the porthole facing the room now there's no way you could get to this video camera without you know without it capturing you on film the, the only way you could get behind it is if you were superman and you could fly like a hundred feet up open up the porthole window and shut the camera off so a couple of videos i'm going to show you one of them is um when we went out to dinner and we come back into the room one of the cabinet doors just opens up on its own and on a boat, everything is latched shut. Every cabinet door, every drawer, all that stuff. Because of the motion of the ocean, uh, you can't have shit spilling out everywhere. So everything latches shut. And before we uh, went out uh, that evening to dinner and drinks and stuff, uh, I left the camera in the porthole recording the room just to see what would happen. And we made sure everything was latched tight before we left and all that stuff. And... Let me pause this real quick because I need to get my shit set up here. Because I want to show you guys this stuff. And, I mean, granted, you don't, like, see a ghost or anything like that. Just take it for what it is. And you be the judge. So, fuck, I haven't made a long video in a really long time. So, all right, hang on. Okay, so I was trying to free up some memory on my computer. Just getting rid of some old files and stuff like that. And I came across the uh, this footage here. It's the main reason I'm doing this video is because I want to show you guys. All right, so let me switch over to the thing here. Ugh. Hopefully this will fucking work. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, yeah, all right, here we go. <laughs> 
So this is really old, it's really grainy, the lighting sucks. And the camera is in the porthole. Now this is us coming home from dinner. Watch this. And you see the letters right there on the bed. There she is. Watch this, watch this. So now what we're doing is we're going to try and recreate this to see if it was like a natural thing. She walks by again, nothing happens. That's like the one thing, if we ever came across something that happened, we try and recreate it. To, we, we try and come up with an explanation as to why, you know, what caused this to happen. And that second time she's walking by, she's like kind of stomping on the floor and maybe like a vibration would unlatch that cabinet. And then I am, there I am right there, right behind her and... There you go. Oh my God, look how young I look. Look how skinny I am. Okay, so there's that clip. Let me show you another one. Hang on here. And again, I mean, is it irrefutable evidence of a haunting or a ghost or anything? No. I mean, it's not. But I can't explain how that door opened up. Again, just keep an open mind, you know, fucking, uh, everything was latched, everything was shut, that door opened up, I, I don't know. Let me show you another one. Okay, so this next uh, clip I'm going to show you is um, the camera shutting off for no reason. It, it, it gets like, like something touches it, it jolts a little bit, and then it shuts off. Every time we go to the cranberry... We had brand new batteries for everything. So there's like no excuse for anything to power off or anything like that. So, again, let's just check this out. Da, 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 ba -do, ba -do, ba -do. Let me pull this up. <gasps> okay. Okay, I'm putting the camera in the porthole. Look how skinny I was. Actually, I'm still pretty fat. Just like that. This was the, was the night of the phantom smells that I was talking about earlier. This was a good night for shit. Why didn't you use a high def camera, Jay? I'm fucking poor. Okay? I haven't seen this video in years. So I put the camera, I turned the camera on, it's got brand new batteries. I set it in the porthole window facing the door. So if anybody were to enter that room, the camera would definitely see it. And I hit record. And again, this is like 3.30 in the morning, we're out roaming the ship.
Watch this. The camera just shut off at that point. Did you hear that noise? You hear like a clunk. Shit. Let me go back. That's it. And the camera shuts off. You hear that? Ugh. And then you hear that. <laughs> you hear that noise and the camera sh shuts off just shortly after we left. Can't explain it. You could be like, oh, well, you bought a cheap-ass camera. Yeah, I did, but I had it for a while. It worked fine. It's never done that. And again, fresh batteries, all that stuff. Uh, I got a funny, uh, another little funny Halloween story for you that you guys will probably like. It's my mom's birthday on Halloween. And when my grandma was pregnant <laughs> on Halloween night, she told my grandpa, um, she said, hey, honey, I think it's time. He said, all right, get in the car. The car was a hearse. My dad, my dad, my grandpa used to be a, a mechanic. And the uh, the cemetery, the mortuary was selling one of their older hearse cars. And my grandpa bought it. He got a good deal on it and he wanted it so that he could, he could keep his tools in the back. And he could lock it up and everything. He thought it'd be perfect for being like a mobile mechanic. It'd be really good. And it was. So when my when grandma went into labor on Halloween night, he loaded her in the hearse on a dark and stormy, cold Missouri night on Halloween. Lightning crashing, thunder everywhere, rain blowing sideways. My grandpa loaded her into a hearse and they drove to the hospital. And everybody at the hospital was like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> Another funny Halloween story is when I was living with, um, down in Ventura, at Ted's place. Ted would always, uh, he'd have a Halloween decoration competition against the, the people across the street. They always tried to one-up each other every fucking year. Anyway, so everybody... And Ventura would show up to trick or treat over there just because it's just so animated and so lit up. I put on my, my uh, jousting armor. I had the helmet on. Fuck. I wonder if my helmet's still in here somewhere. I doubt it. Let me look. I'll show it to you. Hang on. <laughs> it's, it's in storage. I thought I had my jousting helmet laying around in here in the house, but I don't. I'd show it to you. It's a 14th century barrel helm with a horse tail on top. Anyway, I would wear my suit of armor. And Ted put a piece of paper taped to my breastplate that said, Take only one piece. I'm sitting in a chair by the front door holding a bowl of candy. And kids would come up, you know, they thought I was some kind of like, like a mannequin or some shit like that. With everything going on in the yard and all that stuff, they saw me and they'd, they'd try and grab more than one piece and then I would be like, <laughs> and scare the shit out of them. But the funniest thing was when uh, there's this this uh, this lady, uh, she had a stroller with her infant in there and she also had her son that was, I don't know, I guess he's in the neighborhood like five or six years old and he's all dressed up for Halloween. He's got his his pail and everything and he's like on the sidewalk all jazzed to see our house with all this shit out there in the yard and everything and they start to come up the driveway and the kid looks at me and he stops and he looks back at his mom and he does this and she goes go go it's fine and I'm sitting there wearing my shit trying hard not to fucking laugh because it's so cute and he comes over and he reaches <laughs> He, he, he's like looking into the helmet to try and see if he can see my eyes. But because the, the, the light's behind me, you, you can't see in there and see anything. So he's doing that and he looks back at his mom and he points at me. And she goes, go, go. He, re <laughs> he, 
He reaches his hand over the bowl, but he's staring at me with big eyes. And he's got his hand over the bowl, and he's about to get a piece of candy. And he's just and he's just doing this. Just staring at me. <laughs> I'm trying not to move. And he does this, and he looks behind at his mom. And then when he does that, I, I, I got the bowl. I, I just stood up, and I kept the bowl where it was. And, he, and, and his hand's still right there. And he turns back around and he goes, Ah! He saw that I stood up and he ran and he hid behind her ass. And he's crying and shit. His mom's fucking laughing her ass off. I take my helmet off. I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Trick or treat. It's just a little goofy prank, Halloween prank. Here, take as much as you want. That kid was so scared. It was so much fun. When I was a teenager and I got past the point of trick-or-treating, I became an asshole and started, like, back-snatching and pumpkin-smashing. Don't do that. That's not cool. Anyways, guys, um, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit subscribe. There's a small percentage of people that watch my content that haven't subscribed. And I know I sound like a, a broken record. I, I, I don't want to fucking be that guy. But, I mean, I, just between you and me, I got hit with some fucking bills. Um, I'm not asking you for money. I'm just asking you to hit subscribe. It, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And it it, it helps my channel. You know, I, am I making money off of YouTube? Very fucking little. Very fucking little. Because I don't censor myself. Um... I refuse to do that. So uh, the advertisements that you see on my channel, most people opt out. They don't. They want nothing to do with my channel because of the content and the language. And that I get, no big deal. Um, I, I, you know, I don't. I don't do this shit for the money. But if I can make a few bucks, it'd be nice. So hit like, hit subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, not for nothing, tell your mama say hello. High fives and boners. Have a happy Halloween. Be safe out there. Don't do anything fucking stupid. It's happy hour. People are drinking and driving. Uh, stay close to home. Just uh, just be it safe. Play it safe. All right. On that note, I'll see you next time. High fives and boners.